Before you continue, I'd like to administer a short spoiler warning, as this passage contains spoilers for both Trails from Zero and Trails to Azure. So if you haven't played those games, I would advise not listening further. Thank you. That's all. On our order. My name is Joachim Gunther, High Priest of D Therefore G. Six years ago, our order was on the brink of extinction due to the efforts of the authorities and Bracer Guild. I alone escaped danger and took refuge in this land of origin. It was the guidance of the Great D that helped me survive so I could realize the ambitions of our order. Since the time will surely come, I will record data in each of these terminals, on which they shall base the new testaments. To discuss the origins of our order, I will first have to turn to the abominable history of the Zemirian continent. The Great Collapse, approximately 1200 years ago, marked the end of an advanced civilization, and with it the established order, giving rise to the bloodshed and poverty of the Dark Ages. In their fatigue, the people committed a grave sin. They led themselves to be deluded by the flattery of pompous fools and accepted their invented, self-centered cult with open arms. The foolish Septian Church and their symbol, that goddess of the sky. The Dark Ages met its demise, and this faith spread throughout the continent. Let us consider, if said goddess truly existed, can we not assume that she would bestow equal salvation upon all of us? However, disparity yet exists, and people continue to perish in disasters and misfortunes. Does that mean said goddess discriminates upon whom she shall bestow salvation? This thought alone is too ludicrous for words. In the end, she is merely an idol invented by the Septian Church to amass power. A goddess as such simply does not exist. Having reached that conclusion, our predecessors embarked on a long journey to find a true god. Their efforts were not in vain. For at the dawn of the Middle Ages, in the depths of this land, they found the possessor of great power in an eternal slumber. She was known as D. On Gnosis Gnosis is a drug made from pleroma grass, a legendary plant which grows directly on top of septium veins. The way it is prepared, together with D, gives the user enhanced physical abilities and sensory receptivity and draws out their latent power. These effects, however, are mere preparations. The true potential lies elsewhere. Gnosis allows users to link their mind to the revered spirit of D. By doing so, D can draw knowledge from the connected minds and thereupon stimulate her growth. When enough knowledge is amassed to achieve wisdom, D will be resurrected. Moreover, Gnosis left room for improvement. By pushing the capabilities of its user to their limits, the supply of knowledge to D would steadily increase. After 500 years of research, our order has increased the effects of Gnosis and repeated the so-called ceremonies. At a speed that was unfathomable five centuries prior, the completion of Gnosis lay within reach. When we hit an unforeseen obstacle, Due to the scale of our experiments, we were detected by the authorities and the Bracer Guild. They led coordinated assaults in our lodges and, ultimately, our order. Foolish beyond words, indeed. After all, what are a few sacrifices at the cost of resurrecting a true god? In secrecy, I collected the data from the destroyed lodges and arrived in Crossbell, the land of origin. As pleroma grass, the foremost ingredient for Gnosis, grows in abundance in the southern wetlands of Crossbell, there would never be a shortage of raw materials. In addition to the highly advanced facilities once installed by the alchemists from the Middle Ages in the depths of this sun fort, I was blessed with an environment to continue my research and finish the secret remedy. On the Divine Child. 
Crossbell is the home of D there 4G and the land of origin, as it is this very place where our sect inherited the Divine Child from our founders. The Divine Child represents the true God, and her existence is the symbol of D there 4G. Underneath the Sunfort slumbers what appears to be a human girl in perpetuity. In reality, she awaits the moment of her awakening on top of the altar in the Sunfort. For someone to live this long might be hard to believe for us mortals. However, I have seen her with my own eyes. Within this sphere, referred to as the Sacred Cradle, slumbers a little girl. A divine presence. The Sacred Cradle was created by the predecessors of our sect, based on the techniques alchemists had learned by studying artifacts, meaning that like those phenomena described as miracles, there is nothing miraculous to be found here. From her era of inception on, the Divine Child, via Gnosis, has been entrusted with knowledge, which can be best described as infinite. Once wisdom is achieved, the Divine Child will awaken, and she will become the true God, D. And the souls and minds of all will be gathered within D, releasing the people from the goddess spell. That is the prophecy left by the predecessors of D therefore G, and the ambition we shall fulfill. <laughs> <laughs>